I have two words for you. Virtual reality. It is taking over the tech world, and we are getting a first-hand look from CES 2016 in Las Vegas. And joining me now to talk about all this is Lindsay Turrentine. She is CNET Editor-in-Chief. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, how's it going? Good, good, good. So listen, virtual reality is huge for 2016. You got a chance to see the HTC Vive. What does it do and what is it? So this is a headset. It's kind of like all the virtual reality headsets you've probably seen. It goes across your face and immerses you in video and you turn your head and you can see what's going on. It has hand controls so you can put your hands in the action. But what's different about this camera and the, um, the actual screen is that there is a camera in the front of the headset. So it solves one of those weird problems of virtual reality, which is that it lets you see the walls. You don't run into them while you're maybe playing a game or wandering around the room. You can actually see if somebody walks into the room. We've been waiting a long time for virtual reality headsets, but that's given these manufacturers some time to figure out some of the problems. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, and so the other big uh, news or the other big technology that is being introduced at CES, we've seen some 100 drones that are coming out. So what are you seeing in the drone department? So many drones. It's early in the show. This is press day. We're going to see more. But the most interesting one so far is called the Parrot Disco. And the reason it's interesting <laughs> is that it's not a quadcopter. It doesn't, it's not like a helicopter style drone. This is like a plane. It has fixed wings. It can go up to 50 miles an hour. And you can pair a VR headset with it so that you can feel like you're in the action as this drone is swooping around like an airplane. So that's pretty crazy. We're also going to see a lot of drones that are trying to figure out how to avoid obstacles so that we don't deal with so many safety issues as we've been dealing with with drones that get in the way of, say, other emergency operations or that just run into people and hurt them. That is pretty wild. Uh, the other one that I'm really, really interested in, and I think a lot of dudes are interested in this, LG Styler has a home dry cleaner, <laughs> which means like I would probably never have to leave my apartment except to go to work. <laughs> I saw this last night. It looks like a refrigerator for your suits. It's, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. It takes up a lot of space and it doesn't exactly replace the dry cleaner. What it does is it you put your hanger on, a, on the bar and it just wiggles your suit while spritzing it with some mist and maybe uh, some scented dryer sheet types of things. So it does not replace cleaning schmutz off your suit, but it will keep your suits fresher, you know, so maybe you go farther in between dry cleaning visits. Have they given a price on that yet? Is it expensive? There is no price on it. I would guess that it's well over $1,000, probably more. What? You could just go to, you know, the air shopping mall, air mall, and buy one of those little steamers, and you're good to go. <laughs> All right. It's pretty indulgent. Yeah, it's a pretty I, I would indulgent say that. thing, and it's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me ask you, what are the top five things that you've seen at CES this year? Well, I love that drone that we talked about. I also love the crazy new refrigerators that are coming out. Like instead of buying a dry cleaning operation that looks like a refrigerator, just buy a refrigerator that does some really cool stuff. There's one from Samsung that's coming later in the show that has a camera inside that constantly updates and takes a picture of your food every time you close the door so that if you're in the grocery <laughs> store, you can say, what do I have in there? And actually recall that last picture. And then it also works with Instacart <laughs> so that you can order things automatically when you run out. So that's pretty cool. And then there's a fridge from LG that when you walk up to it, it has a sensor. It can actually change the door to be clear. It's solid until you walk up and then it's clear so that you can see what's inside without opening the fridge. And then kind of like some of those cars where you can put your foot under the tailgate and the rear hatch opens, you can actually swipe your foot along the bottom of the refrigerator and the door opens. You so know, cool. <laughs> I mean, that sounds really, really cool, but I mean, already I'm like the fact that you could see all the food in your refrigerator if you're sitting on the couch and you're watching a football game or something and you just glance over and you see like the frozen pita pockets and you know, I, I that would be really, really <laughs> a problem for me, I think. <laughs> 
It's only clear if you want it to be. It's only clear. But you do, I think you probably have to keep your fridge a lot cleaner. It could be pretty gross. <laughs> Actually, my girlfriend knows that I'm very, very, I'm very particular about keeping my refrigerator very, very clean. That's really funny. Well, um, then you're a great contender for this one. Then there's the Fitbit Blaze, which is Fitbit's attempt to compete with the Apple Watch. It's kind of like those, and I'm dating myself a little bit. It's like those watches from the 80s where you could pop out the center of the watch and swap it into different bands. This Fitbit works like that. It's a little bit more like a watch than past Fitbits, and it looks really stylish. It's about $200. Um, you know, and this is sort of an example of how wearables are evolving to be more fashionable, which we're going to see a lot more of at this show. And so that's, that's pretty cool. We are in a strange... We also... Sorry, yeah, I was going to say, we're in a strange new world, Lindsay. I mean, the, the, I mean every, wearable tech and, and the, the virtual reality headsets. And what's your final one there? Oh, okay, so this is really cool. This is a little bit more traditional. The LG G6 television. Uh, this is LG's highest end television, and we at CNET have always thought that uh, over the past year or so, LG has had by far the best pictures. So this is their OLED high-end television. But what they're doing now is applying the display straight onto glass. So the TV is 2.57 millimeters thick. It is wow. the thinnest thing you've ever seen. It's also crazy expensive. They say it's going to cost less than $10,000. <laughs> Our experts think that probably means $999,999. $999. Wow, wow. It's wow. going to be expensive. Sounds yeah. cool, but yeah, probably out of my price, Lee. Uh, I got it. You know, listening to you talk and looking at all these images, I mean, the world of Philip Dick. Remember the writer Philip Dick, do Android's dream of electric sheep? Yep. This is the world we're living in right now. <laughs> It absolutely is, and it's just going to get crazier. So come on back to CNET for the rest of the show. There's a lot more tech that's going to be announced over the next two days. All right. Lindsay Turrentine, editor-in-chief of CNET.com, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy CES. Thanks, Vlad.